it should all be in here. So what I want to start with is the kick. So I'm going to mute machine now. So we've got that tribal groove we got before. That's in there. And we want to get the kick. You can see there, it's already named. And then Across. And then um, <coughs> we're going to get uh, some of the other elements here. And we're just going to drag these across. And one of the things about um, if you want to perform live with Ableton, because you're going to be using the same channel for everything, rather than mixing on the mixer here, what I do is I actually mix in the clip. So if I want that kick to be louder, I'll actually turn the volume up in the in the clip area there. And um, that way I can keep the volumes on each channel the same and I can layer stuff across and put different things into the same channel without having to constantly change the volume on each channel. So, um, so there we've got that. At the moment, these are all elements brought in from a uh, machine that I've exported. made up in uh, before I came here. This is a chord thing that I sampled off my 909 which I love hardware when I'm performing so um, I just sampled this in and uh, what I'd like to do in this track I would actually like to uh, use a filter on the chord so uh, the way that I've set up the APC40 is I've set it up as, uh, as a controller keyboard, basically, uh, for the purpose of this exercise. So what I've done is I've gone into um, preferences here, and uh, here uh, you want to, the control surface to be uh, uh, selected to none, and then input to APC40, and then down here you want MIDI port remote on on the APC40. So now this is acting just as a, a kind of controller, a, a standard MIDI controller. So um, say I want to assign um, this to the cutoff of the filter on that, then I'll click on MIDI here and I'll go to the cutoff which is here and I'll just twiddle that knob like that and it'll assign it. And I want that one on uh, the Q or resonance. I'll click there and I'll twiddle that knob and that will assign that. And now I'm free to, to tweak that live. And I've also got some basic sound effects that I want to um, that I want to trigger over the top of it as well. So um, just three vocal bits. I'll do the same thing on then. I'll click MIDI again. I'll select the bits I want to be triggered by each one of these and I'll go like this. One, two, three. And now I'm free to trigger them. them. So when performing live I can really tweak stuff at the same time. So uh, We've got some basic elements in there, and you know I really just want to work with basic elements. So uh, just to kind of show how to arrange stuff um, in, a, in a live arena, basically. So I'm gonna bring down some other elements that I've made before and just pop them into the mix. So that's basically pretty much everything we're gonna be working with today. We're gonna keep it simple in the mix at the same time. Now, if we want to now arrange these lights, um, what I find is I go into preferences here, and um, in the warp 
uh, record, warp and launch area, I make sure all these things on the bottom are off. So you've got your select on launch off, uh, next scene on launch off, and start recording on scene launch off. I think some of these are on um, as standard, so you have to actually go and switch them off. And um, so let's uh, start arranging live, basically. Um, for the purpose of this, I'm going to set this to um, the quantize four bars, just because it's going to make it easier to um, kind of work within uh, the, uh, the parameters of a, a normal track where things will change every four bars. So uh, normally, uh, if you want to have a bit more of a jamming session, you'll be free to set it to one bar and just jam away. But for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to do that. So the other thing that I like to do personally is um, I like to use O, L, and P to select, to scroll up and down, and to trigger um, uh, the scene as a whole. So here, what I will do is I will go to keyboard, and when I go to keyboard, I can assign certain keys on the keyboard to do certain things over here. So down here, you've got play up and down. So I want P to play. O to go up, up, and L to go down. And then I turn key off, and now when I do press those keys, they go up and down the scenes like that, and then that one plays it. So we're now ready to start maybe arranging something live. So uh, let's say we want to start with this tribal groove and the Congo loop. So we put those together, actually make sure we copy them, so we've still got the originals up there. Put them together on a scene, and for the Let's call this scene, by holding Command and R, I can rename each scene. Let's just call it Start, because that's where our starting point for, the, for, the, um, for where we're going to start the track, basically. So I hit that, and that's just that going on. So the next one, next thing I want to happen is I want the kick to come in. So all I do is I drag a copy of the kick down to the second scene, and now, if I hit that, that will come in on the on the four bar quantize. Say okay, after that, I want maybe a shaker to come in, something like that. So we're going to make it quite DJ friendly. So we're going to start building the track in quite a linear kind of way. And for me, I find this way a lot easier to arrange stuff because um, I don't particularly like putting blocks together on a screen. And the, what you can do here is you can actually record this into the arrange page and then you can go back and tweak it and layer effects over the top of it and kind of make it a lot more interesting. But for the basic structure, this is a very easy way of just laying it down. So after that, I want a hi-hat to come in. So I just Set up another scene there, and then around this point, I'm going to maybe drop the kick drum out at the same time as bringing the bass in. So the bass is here, deep and dark. I think that bass needs to be a bit louder. And then, and a great thing you can do. In each scene here, you've got a little square, and that tells you can tell Ableton to keep on playing that click when you uh, that click when you trigger the, the next scene. So I simply hold Command and E and go on that. And now, if you've got anything that's more than uh, than four bars long or anything that's got any uh, automation within the click, then that's a great tip to use because that's going to just continue playing now see that area is blank in that and, uh, and I can carry on doing that as far down as I want to go now and so that's kind of coming along nice maybe we'll bring the clap in there four bars later I'm also going to have the clap a little bit Louder. And um, I think I'll probably bring in the chord on a scene down. So I'll do another scene like that. And then when the 
four bar come in, that'll come in exactly on time. Now another great thing you can do during live is because you probably want to keep these settings as they are for a lot of the time, unless you're um, unless you're tweaking them live. So um, what you can do, you've got in here, you can actually draw. Say I want to keep the resonance a bit lower on that than the highest resonance. I can draw the resonance in down there, and that works relatively to the resonance here. So I can put the resonance up all the way up here, but it's not going to go all the way up there. I can also do that. If I don't want to tweak it live and I want to draw, say, for, say I don't want to tweak that live and I want to draw uh, modulation, automation, information into the clip, I can actually draw that into the clip here. So let's go for um, the auto filter and let's go for the, cut, the frequency cut off. Um, now, say, we're going to bring that right down. Say, here you're limited to the length of the clip, but if you go to unlinked here, then you can make that automation as long as you want to make it. So the track's not going to be that long, so let's just push it all the way up to 392 bars. And now I can actually draw that automation into the clip itself. So that filter will rise to the clip. So when I trigger that, you see it'll start. start there and it will just carry on moving up with that clip which is great when you're doing live stuff because I mean you, you've only got so many you know so many hands at the same time so you want to be uh, kind of tweaking stuff with your hands but if you've got any other kind of automation going on that you want to go on and you can't do that live you can draw that into the clip so, so let's do that here and once again here I just want that to continue I don't want to, that to trigger again so I'll just Command and E to get rid of that stop clip there. And now I can carry on drawing this down like that as much as I want. And say we want to do a little breakdown at this point. So we just drop everything out apart from perhaps the stab. And normally you'd add a, some kind of effect in there to bring the breakdown down in. But for this purpose, we're just going to cut it there. And then we can build that up in the same way. Maybe you want to add a clap. Another great thing is you can, whatever you're playing at the moment, you can actually you go to create and you can go capture and insert theme. And that will capture exactly what you're playing and it will, we select it there, capture and insert theme. That will insert a theme of what you're playing at that moment in time or that in, in that scene there. And of course, we've got this being triggered again there. We don't want that, so we simply delete that and command and E again, and we've got that playing from before. So now we've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a breakdown going on. I'm going to take this four bar quantize off for now anyway. So we want to bring that in next. got everything back in after a little breakdown and uh, so now the beautiful thing about this is whatever you've drawn put in there in scenes you can now go and record this into the arrange page so set that to four bars again and I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna put together a rough arrangement so I'm just gonna start it there doing this by either selecting the scene or using the O, L and P that I set up before to trigger each one of those scenes. And the great thing about scenes is it's great for arranging because you can build whole arrangements up by
by just selecting everything to play at the same time. I mean, it's great when you've got this going and you've got the APC set up in its other format so you can uh, actually stop and start things. And you can, you know, you can obviously make things a lot more complicated than they are at the moment. But this is a good starting base to, um, to arrange live. So the bass line comes in now. Again, just using L, O, and P to navigate around the arrangement. And this is the chord that we've all automated already, so we just want to leave it to play a bit while this rises up. So we want it to come in a bit quicker than that, we can just do that. Say we want to maybe send more to the delay as well, we can do all this while it's playing. So we can, uh, as long as we're not touching that, say I want to send that to more delay, I can click on there and then click on there like that and I've got the delay there as well, the send there as well. So. so now with these knobs I'm controlling cut off, resonance and effects then. So we want to break down. arrange page here we've got all that recorded now so now we can go in and start doing the, the real business of arranging layering effects over the top uh, you know this is quite raw as it is so you know if you want to put more complicated uh, stuff in you can easily do that at this point but uh, and you can, the great thing about this you can really do it by feeling as well um, when you, you know, once you've got something and you're really feeling it, you can just get into the groove and you can jam for, you know, a couple of hours beforehand and then you can just lay it down and you can, uh, you kind of find that you come up with a, a lot more interesting stuff in the arrangement as well. So now, I've laid that down, but I can now, I can go over the top and I've got three vocal samples that I've set up before here, I can actually record them over the top as well, so... So say for example, I'm going to set up a like that. Just as an example, and if say for example I want to set up um, on the master, a great thing that a lot of producers and I use is on the master track uh, we just use an EQ. So it kind of it's the same as uh, if you're it, uh, on a DJ mix when you just drop the bass out. So you can set that up to. You can either set it up on a key here, or you can draw it in on here. So we're gonna we're in the arrange page now. So let's make this a bit clearer. And the same thing again. I can if I want to put filters and stuff over the top of this. I can I can do that, and I can assign them to any. When when I'm playing out live, I use my APC40 like a controller keyboard. So I've got lots of different frequency, uh, uh, filter frequencies and stuff on each one of these. So I use some maybe like a live uh, 
303 emulator and I can be doing that live and at the same time I can have lots of vocal samples and stuff that I'm triggering off here. At the same time I'm using that to kind of perform with. So it, it frees up some hands, but you can do it if you're using the scene. If you're using scenes to arrange, you free up some hands and you can actually perform a lot easier. I mean, I like to keep things simple, you know, and by arranging whole tracks by using L, O and P, it makes it easy and it gives you another hand to be doing a lot of stuff over the top. So now we've got this rough arrangement. We want to drag this out and we want to uh, kind of get in there and cut into it and uh, kind of make it a little bit more complex. So, um, maybe the first thing I'm going to do is, is get into the kick and I'm going to create another channel for that. Insert audio track here and I'm going to grab that kick and I'm going to copy a little bit of it by doing that and I've just selected a little bit of it and uh, what I want to do is I want to make that kick play probably a little bit cheesy but just in a kind of like that just by doubling up the, the sample and bringing that in so if you look at where it's looping it's now looping there. So I can now put that in different places, like after the breakdown and stuff like that. Actually, you know, say I decide I want the chord to come in a bit earlier, that's also fine. I just drag that chord back there. And all that information is still in there, telling it where to. Where to start, and that stayed the same. So all that filter information is still in there. And there's another sound as well, which I want to put in there afterwards, which is. Up here. And that's once again that's been sampled off the 909 and it just it's more of a emotive synth sound so So let's play that from the beginning and see where we are and what we want to do with that arrangement. any of the other elements left over from the machine that I haven't used as well, like the rides, um, more percussive elements, and we can just, we can preview these in this area here, just to see if they're going to work over the top. So let's try that ride, and that We quite like that, so we're going to add that over the top. So bring that in there. Just drag that along. And I'm going all the way along the track now. Actually, I think that clap should come in there as well, so I can simply drag that clap back to there. See if we've got anything else we want to use here. That's quite an interesting sound, so we can set that up as a sound effect. So once again, we can just drop anything in wherever we want it.
And here we've got the sends and returns on here. We can draw the send and return information in here. So in the same way we, we drew it into the clip, we can draw it, draw it into the arrange page. So in that breakdown we've got that little noise, but we only want to use that first little bit of the noise. So we turn loop off, we drag that across there, and then that comes in there. So if, Again over here, and drag that first. Another hand, if we've drawn it automation in, in, uh, in the scene, in the actual clips themselves, we can then, and we don't want to use it in the clips, we actually want to use it in the arrange page because then it's much easier to you uh, to use and uh, make things a lot easier we can actually copy the envelope from within the clip itself and then here we can uh, select that one was the auto filter and the frequency and we can paste that in there and there we go, that's actually pasted the, the automation we've drawn in the clip into the arrange page now. So if you are doing stuff in clips for your live show, or um, you know, just because sometimes it's easier to do it in clips if you're, before, if you're arranging live, then you can always take the stuff that you put in the clip and put them into your arrange page by simply copying and pasting. <laughs> And as I was saying before, we're going to put a little uh, EQ in there, like the, the DJ effect I was talking about. And for this, the EQ3 is, is perfect, it's really simple. Just click on that. And you turn the low frequency off, and you can tweak where the cutoff is for the low. So maybe somewhere like that. Quite a good effect, and sometimes you can even put a reverb on up after it as well. So that's triggered at the same time. So I put that on the master channel. So say in this point of the track, I want to drop out the bass. All I do is when I go there, automatically EQ low is on, and I just go like that and it drops it out. And I want to bring back, maybe I want to bring that back with that effect that I made earlier. So here, So all that automation we've recorded is, is in there already, so here's our breakdown. And another thing is maybe that effect, we want to use that in a different way, the same effect. So we're going to copy and paste that down there, we're going to get rid of all the other ones, like that. And here, perhaps we just want to loop a little bit of it. Dead, 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 dead. 
drag that across like that. And we want to draw some maybe some uh, just some volume automation into that. So. So by unselecting that, when you select that, that that drags things down in kind of uh, chunks, and we don't want that. We want to draw that in smoothly. So. We're going to bring that down. Drag that like that. Drag that kind of automation. Maybe put a little bit of pitch bend into it, into the clip as well, as we do here. And once again, we're going to use the unlinked thing. This is really handy because this clip is only like a couple of beats long. So if you want to do any automation that's going to last any longer than that, then you need to unlink it here and go to the length here. And we're going to do a little uh, eight bar thing. So it's going to go up in pitch like that. Now, maybe bring it down again. And now we just want this track to run out. So that we can duplicate time, which is also a really, really, really handy function. Duplicate time. run that up to about six minutes and we can break down the track. And I think you know we're gonna record a little bit of stuff on the um, on the filter again in this point here. So we select that track and then we just tweak. Maybe we want to take a little bit of that thing we did before with the, the pitch, but not all of it, just the last bit of it. This isn't, a, uh, this isn't a long breakdown, so we're just going to grab that and we're going to pull that across there. So. so I'm just going to run through everything that we've, we've done there just to make it a bit clearer because I kind of arranged the track um, on the fly kind of thing. So. Basically, we've uh, started in the scene view page and we've just uh, built up scenes um, going down so we can arrange the track by triggering whole scenes at once. So that's uh, using the L and O and P keys. Uh, we've uh, basically assigned them to 
trigger to go up and down so you can trigger each individual scene. And now we've built up the scene by, along the scene, we've just put every sample that we want to loop and play at the same time on every scene like that. So. We've then gone and recorded the results of that into the arrange page. And over the, what we've got there is a basic arrangement. And we've gone into that basic arrangement and we've uh, layered some effects and uh, we've uh, created some uh, new stuff over the top of it. And now we've basically got um, you know, the, the beginnings of a track, basically. So I, I personally find it a lot easier doing it that way than I would uh, starting with blocks and arranging the other way. Can I just ask, is that is that the kind of the way you always arrange, arrange your tracks? Is that the way you always work in the studio? Nowadays, uh, I do I do tend to start arranging a track that way, yeah. Okay. Yeah, just because I've been performing as a live act for quite a while. And does uh, it take a few takes to run it through it, or is it something where you kind of get a rough idea and go from there? Obviously, because I only had about 20 minutes yeah. here, like, uh, you, you really want to get into the groove, do you know what I mean? And once you're into the groove, you can kind of trigger stuff, and, and it's kind of a lot more intuitive. So I think the... The sound of the track sounds a lot more live, you know. Um, ordinarily, especially in a live show, I would I wouldn't set the um, quantize to four bars. But I think when you're beginning, it's a good idea to do that because I used to set it to one bar, and then I used to make tracks which were almost impossible for DJs to play because <laughs> stuff was coming in at all the wrong times. So uh, for for you know, to, it's a good place to start quantizing to four bars. And how about on um, the kind of equipment side of things? Obviously, here today you've got your machine, your micro, and the ABC40. Is that kind of your setup at home? Or no, I, studio or live? I use a, a, Roland, a Roland MC909, which is quite an old school kind yeah, of group yeah, sampler, yeah. groove box kind of thing. And I love that because it's like an old school um, studio in a box. And I have that synced up via MIDI to Ableton during my live show. I also use a Chaos Pad 3 and a little Psych Loop uh, sampler as well. Okay. And, um, I don't actually use machine live in my live shows at the moment. What I do is I'll make a lot of the loops up for my live shows in machine. And like I showed here, I'll, I'll take those loops as a basis of a track and uh, and uh, and basically export them into Ableton using audio. And you know, in, in the live set, is it um, is it really hands on? You know, are, yeah, you, are yeah. you kind of all over the place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, I do I do like to jam, and you know, the, the reason that I love arranging with using. Uh, the scenes is it just otherwise would it's great using the ABC40 when you're muting and unmuting tracks all the time and that kind of stuff but that takes up all your hands so when you've got that you're just kind of arranging with that and you can be triggering stuff over here you can be do muting and unmuting stuff on your hardware kind of really getting into it whilst the actual arranging of stuff is is pretty simple you yeah know what I mean yeah have we got any questions for anyone Um, there's a couple online. Um, yeah. um, Marco asks, I think you missed a bit where you talk, when you're talking about how you set the APC40 up as a dummy controller. Yeah. Um, and he's asking, you set, you, you set your OIMP to control the tracks. Why not use the auto map? Why not? Use, no, I don't. Well, I, because, uh, yeah, no, it's just not the way. I mean, Auto map is great, but um, the way that I work doesn't necessarily line up with the way that the APC is set up. So once I've got a live set and I've got, um, you know, I've got lots and lots of tracks going on and uh, lots and lots of samples, I'd much rather go in there and map it all myself. Basically. Um, and someone else asked, um, you mentioned hardware earlier on that you yeah. like to use it. What, you know, what's what's your go-to hardware for for your musical elements and your bass lines and stuff like that? Uh, what 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 what? what well, it as in creating, you know, creating your musical elements that you use in your. Well, so I'll stuff. use it. I'll use lots of different stuff. Like some stuff will come off the MC nine hundred and nine. Do you know what I mean? But other stuff I'll make in Machine, and other stuff I'll make in Ableton. So whatever I'm feeling at the time. Do you know what I mean? What I tend to do is I tend to build whole whole elements up in one uh, in one thing at a time. So when I'm on the MC nine hundred and nine, I build up like a whole track on that, like using all the sounds and stuff off that, and samples that I've imported into that. When I'm in machine, I'll build something up in there, and same in Ableton, rather than sampling a bit off there and bringing a bit in there. And I use them kind of as separate entities in the live show, but kind of synced up via MIDI. That's everything from online at the moment. Um, just got to give a few shout-outs. People have been saying where they're tuning in from. So we've got people in Bosnia, 
Canada, Mexico, Macedonia, so yeah. all over the shop, so <laughs> they're all enjoying it. Um, yeah, keep your questions coming if online if you've got any more. Anyone in the room? Uh, well, I mean, I, I've got a couple couple more questions, really. <laughs> okay. uh, you know, obviously, Ableton seems to be... Um, I can't really imagine the way you work working with any other kind of software. Is, is that where you started? Yeah, I, I mean, I started using Ableton when it came out, which yeah. I think it was about 10 years ago or something now. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, in, in those days, it was very different. You didn't have MIDI and stuff like that. So I, I kind of embraced the scene page straight mm -hmm. away. So, uh, yeah, it, it's the only thing that I know. I think there are other things out there, but it's the only, it's the original thing that you can work yeah. that way in, basically. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, well, how about how about the the sounds from that track? You know, was that where did you make those in machine previously and bring them over? Are they from a certain source? Or? Yeah, I mean, uh, all the drums and the bass line are from machine. Uh, the chords and stuff I actually sampled off the nine oh nine because I didn't want to bring that here today. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that would normally be running up off the nine oh nine, synced up. So uh, uh, and then uh, some uh, some other. Uh, other elements are kind of samples that I've kind of warped as well. So, but uh, all the drums and the bass line, the basis of the track was all built up in machine. Mm. And the, your your live set itself, how much of it is, you know, kind of completely on the fly? I mean, you know, how do you bring elements of your tracks and then perform them live, or is it really working from scratch? I normally work. I normally make the stuff live and then turn it into tracks. Okay. A few things I have made and then thought, oh, I'd like a live version of this, and then yeah. split it down into its elements, and then I can perform it live. But um, normally uh, I start in a, in a live way, and that's why I arrange stuff like that, mm. because um, that's the way that I, I know. And, I've, you know, for a few years I didn't release anything. I was just, well, apart from a couple of live albums, I was just uh, yeah. performing live and, and focusing on the live show. So I've kind of taken what I've learned from that and brought that into production. Okay. I mean, it's, it's an amazing way to work, I think we'd agree. Um, what have you got kind of coming up in the future? What should we be on the lookout for? Well, I've got a, a live album coming out on the 5th of November. That's on Cubism Records. And I've got um, quite a few shows, actually. I'm playing at Wiggle on Saturday. And I've uh, got quite a few tour dates coming up as well. So. Cool, man. Is there is there any more questions from anyone in the room? If not, uh, oh, well, I guess we'll, uh, we'll kind of wrap things up there. Um, just enough time to say a big, big thanks to Sage. Take him a round of applause. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming along. Show us how it's done, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll um, see you guys very, very soon. Thanks again. Bye bye. Cheers.